In this probability video for finite math students, we're going to be looking more specifically at expected value. The expected value is the expected gain or loss that you would expect to have over the long haul. So if you, for example, played the lottery every day for 10 years, on the average, you're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some, but on the average, the expected value is going to tell you how much you've won per game on average. Not that you've won that amount on any one single game, but it's the average of your winnings over the course of those years of playing. Expected value is really helpful when you're making decisions. So for example, you're trying to decide, should I or should I not speed? And what you're thinking through is, well, what's the probability of, of being caught if I speed? Or worse yet, what's the probability of having an accident? And if I am caught, what would that cost? If I do have an accident, what would that cost? And then by thinking through that amount of information, you're going to make a decision as to whether or not you're going to speed. So one third piece you'd want to think in there, also add in there, is why am I speeding? What's the benefit? What's the gain of getting there wherever I'm going more quickly? Or what's the potential loss if I don't get there in a uh, quick time? Losing a job, uh, having a medical emergency, etc. right? So expected value, we can use expected value to calculate uh, over the long haul what we'd expect to have our gain or loss. The first example is worked out for you in the notes, but I want to talk through this example. Expect To get the expected value, we've got to think of all the different possible outcomes, and then what's the probability of that outcome occurring? That's in this chart, P uh, sub I, so the probability of the first event is P sub one, P sub two, so the probability of the second event, P sub three is the third event, probability, etc. What's the probability of each of those events uh, occurring? And then what's the gain? Now I say gain even though there is sometimes a loss because when we see a loss, we'll see it written as a negative gain. So what we'd have here is this expected value of X is the sum of all products of the gains times the probabilities from I equals one up to I equals N. So from the first event all the way up to the nth event. In this case, there's four of them. And so simply put, here's what we do. We're gonna multiply the probability times its gain, the probability times its gain, the probability times its gain, and add those products together. So when we move to this second example, we can say that the expected value is equivalent to the first probability times its gain added to the second probability times its gain added to the third probability times its gain added to the fourth probability times its gain. And when I do that multiplication and uh, the multiplication and then the addition all together. Uh, and by the way, I'm not going to bother with this zero, right? Because uh, that's just going to be a zero. But we'd have negative 0.2 plus zero. I'll go ahead and write it. But when we're putting it into our calculator, we don't actually have to put that in, right? And you could do this multiplication. Two times a tenth is going to be two tenths. You could do that without a calculator, right? Uh, 4 times 4 is 16, 1 decimal place, 1.6, and then add them up to get 1.6, 1 and 6 tenths. 
let's try another example because after you've done a several several of these examples, it gets easier and easier. You can follow how it works. The following table gives a probability distribution. Oh, I'm sorry, number three. Um, we've got this table that gives a distribution, and we can calculate by multiplying each of the probabilities times each of the gains, right? And they've worked that out for us. Make sure you're not just copying it. You know what I'd advise? Stop the video and in your notes, see if you can work through that example on your own without, without it being done. Are you ready to do number four on your own? And this is an interesting example. It's the number of packages and thousands that are handled by the shipping company. And we want to find the expected number of packages that are handled on each day. So if we uh, use the formula, we're going to multiply and add, multiply and add one, two, three, four, five times. Go ahead and, and fill those numbers in and see if you can do that without the guidance of the video doing that for you. And then when we type that into a calculator or even an Excel spreadsheet, uh, we could get each of these pieces. And then after we have each of the pieces, each of the products, we could add them together. And on your calculator, you might just do it in one swoop without um, stopping to write them down, and that's okay. I do want to encourage you to write this part, though. The stream, string of what's being multiplied and added. And here's why I'd encourage you to do that. That's going to help you remember the process. And it's also going to help you on a test or a quiz if your instructor gives partial credit, that's going to give your instructor an opportunity to see that you had the right idea. Maybe you just copied a number wrong, right? So you want to be sure to show this step each time. This step maybe, uh, maybe you don't need to show because you could just type it into the calculator as you go and let your calculator do the order of operations. But, uh, but make sure you're demonstrating that you know how to do this example, these types of examples. And number five, it's just more of the same, right? The expected value. We've got the number of days a uh, student is absent from math class. And then we want to find the expected value for the expected number of days that a student will be absent per semester. And we could use the formula expected value of x equals, and it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five different values given. So we could sum up those products and fill in the zero, one, two, three, four, and the probabilities, one tenth, two tenths, one tenth, five tenths, one tenth, multiply them out. This first one we wouldn't really even need to put in our calculator. And then add them up to get their, the expected value. Don't forget, by the way, to end the problem with a statement. So find the expected number of days the students will be absent. So we could say, therefore, you can expect a student to be absent and fill in the blank, blank days on average. So on average, you could expect a student to be absent this many days. 
I should have modeled that on the previous examples also. You want to make sure that you're answering the question, right? Okay, this next example, number six, we have a table that gives a probability for the number of flights that are overbooked by an airline. Isn't that annoying when that happens to you? Uh, they overbook it expecting that a certain number of passengers are not going to show up. Find the expected number of flights that are overbooked per day. And so we could see from this example six that we could write the therefore statement, the final, cl final clarification of the answer. So we expect an average of two and two tenths overbooked flights per day. Now notice that, of course, there's not two and two tenths, 2.2 .2 flights ever overbooked. But on average, over the course of the, the year, we could expect 2.2 per day on average. Number seven, the table gives a number of people who ride on public transportation on the main route on Saturdays in a large city. We can find the expected number of people on that transportation system, the main route on a Saturday. So here we collected some empirical data we found that there were 20, the probability of having 25 riders was 5 hundredths, probability of 50 riders was 10 one hundredths, and so on. So we could use this to get an expected value. And on the average, what do you expect? So we're going to multiply each of these items, uh, each of the x's with their probabilities, and then add them up. Try that on your paper. Once we've written that out and multiplied and added, multiply and add, multiply and add, and so on, we'll get an expected value. And then we could make our statement. Therefore, we expect an average of blank riders on this Saturday route, on this uh, main route on any given Saturday. Uh, that is a list of examples of expected value when we've got the distribution handed to us. Try those examples and make sure you practice some of the homework as well. You do need to know that formula because that's the basis of expected value. And reach out to me if there are some questions you have about these examples or maybe some of the examples from your homework.